Yeah, you're colluding here? Yeah, well, absolutely, absolutely. Mindy Agava Shelley is a veteran of the Russian media. Let's, let's keep it super simple, because yeah. if we start bringing up all these crazy yeah. details, no, no, pe no. people are going to go insane. He used to work at RT, the Russian-funded television station. Now he's the boss at Sputnik's DC bureau. This is the first Russian government-funded radio station in the United States. So you're hoping to get those congressmen and stuff listening to Sputnik in the morning? Oh, I would love them. <laughs> I would love them, too. <laughs> Why are you making such a face? <laughs> I, mean, I don't know, man. I just... <laughs> Before 105.5 with Sputnik, it was the public radio home for bluegrass and country music in D.C. So why do the Russians want it? Mindia wants to prove Russian state media isn't a fire hose of fake news. We really want it to be on FM because next time an idiot writes that, oh, these are the guys who propelled Trump into his position, mm -hmm. people will tune in and hear what we say on the air and will be, uh, that doesn't sound like a pro-Trump radio. <laughs> Sputnik the network has been around for a while. It's global, with content in more than 30 languages. On the radio, you won't hear anyone say, you're listening to Russian government-funded broadcasting. But you will hear the Russian pronunciation of that famous satellite about 15 times a day. You're listening to Radio Sputnik. The shows on Sputnik FM aren't about Russia. They're about America. The signature show is called Fault Lines. Garland Nixon, who calls himself a Bernie bro, squares off daily against Lee Stranahan the only avowed Trump supporter on the air. I think the Russian narrative is a complete load of crap. The guys disagree about a lot of things. Russia is not one of them. We're in another boogeyman phase, and Russia's the current look, boogeyman, here's, and everybody, here's, look, it's fashionable to be scared here's, of Russia. The takeaway from listening to Sputnik is that other news is corrupt, and that listeners should fear the American media infrastructure. Yesterday, we started the week by talking about the dopey, lying, mainstream establishment media that lies to the American people and does propaganda. The Americans with shows on Sputnik FM told us no one tells them what to say or how to say it. And what they want to say, most of the time, comes from the far left. I'm a socialist. I've been part of the anti-war movement since I was a teenager during the Vietnam War. You have Jeff Sessions, who hates immigrants, who's a xenophobe himself. Why does the Russian government pay Brian Becker to be on the air five hours a week? I'm a critic of U.S. foreign policy. Perhaps that's a voice that the Russian government wants to have the American people also listen to. But I don't really know. It's not like Russia is a great example for American progressives to aspire to. But Sputnik offers them the chance to hold a mirror up to their own country in ways mainstream outlets usually don't. It has to be one of the most open secrets out there, though, quite frankly, that the Pentagon is really just one giant pig trough for every military contractor and lobbyist connected to contractors to feed from. Eugene Perrier once ran for D.C. City Council as a Green Party candidate. Now he hosts By Any Means Necessary, a show that includes a lot of voices from Black Lives Matter and similar movements, people you generally won't hear anywhere else. He says, for guys like him, a platform is a platform. Do you care if there's a, you know, a Russian... Uh, political leader who's like, yeah, man, this, this, this show's on, and we're making the U.S. look weak. America is doing quite a bit of destabilization, and so it's not that surprising that in a power struggle of major powerful countries over big interest, that all parties involved are gonna be trying to influence each other one way or another. That's true yeah. in sort of an academic sense, right? Sure. But you're the person on the air. Yeah. Well, so I wonder what if you're the tool of that destabilization, does that bother you at all? Well, I would say this, for people who are concerned that like airing more content about police shootings or whatever it may be is gonna rip America apart and is a huge weakness that Russia is exploiting. If that's what you think, then there's one simple solution and that's solve the problem. I think what we're doing is just bringing to light issues of concern in America that are gonna be divisive, whether there's a Sputnik or whether there's not a Sputnik. State-owned media is nothing new. The US has it and so does its allies. Mindia won't tell us how much Sputnik FM costs and we don't know how many people are listening yet, but we're seeing how Russia is using its state-owned media in our country. It gave an FM station to an existing American resistance. What's funny about this is like, you know, the original uh, Sputnik, right? It was this thing that created this great terror in America when it went over, but it was actually just like a sort of benign beeping satellite. In Russia, it's still a matter of a national pride. Oh, we were the first in space. And here in the States, it's like, Ah, the Russians are coming! <laughs> so this is not the Russians are coming. This radio station is not the Russians are coming. Well, yeah, we already came. 